You know, being able to speak is also important because you're going to have to present. That's why many of you will find that they're asking for presentation as well when you try to get a business analyst job because they're going to call you to see if you can talk. They're going to interview you to see if you know anything and then they want to see how you present what you know. They give you a problem or a use case or a case study and they want you to do your analysis and present it back because most of the time after you've done all your elicitation and you've done all of your you know, interviews and you get all this data, you come up with your processes and you write all these user stories. It's a lot of detail. It's very detailed. How can you take that and make it consumable? How can you make it something that a, a room of people who have no idea what you're talking about can understand what it is and do that usually within an hour, right? So you have to present it and get feedback. Everything normally is within an hour. Nobody has an hour and a half, two hours to give you. So... <laughs> So you have to be very skilled at, at taking large volumes of data and being able to, to scale it down, make it, make it consumable. Consumable means that you're going to put pictures, as much pictures as you can instead of words. You're going you're gonna to orient the person, like explain the problem before you get into the solution and things like that. So there are some skills around that, that I'm going to share with you later on, and that's mainly going to be around the presentation skills. Um, but the oral and written communication is very important. Building a rapport with people is important because you're going to need to have a connection with someone before you start interviewing them and asking them a bunch of questions about the project. So building that relationship is important. And that comes on the interpersonal and co consultative skills. I call it just, you know, interpersonal skills. Facilitation skills. So this is great when you're doing like workshops, when you're doing group activities. How do you facilitate to make sure everybody stays on target? There's no side conversation going on and people are distracted or you keep them focused on the aim so that at the end of it, you know you've accomplished something. It's not just a big waste of time. One of the worst things you can do as a business analyst is waste people's time. When they come to a workshop or they come to a brainstorming session or ideation session and maybe you walk away with something, but they feel like they didn't walk away with anything, they don't want to come back. So I'll give an example of this can go wrong. And we're going to talk about that later when we get into um, more elicitation and analysis. If you invite people to come to, a, let's say, a brainstorming session, right? And you don't know anything about their world. You want to find out how they're doing their jobs because you want to improve what they're doing. But they already know what they do, right? So it's, it's no benefit to them to come and tell you. They will only feel like they got a benefit if at the end of it, you came up with some ideas that could be solutions. It doesn't mean it has to be agreed upon that it is the solution. But if they felt that they contributed to a future state, then that would have been a great use of their time. But if they came and all they did was dump what they already know on you and they left feeling like they just told you what they already know and you left feeling, yeah, I just learned new stuff, but they didn't get anything back then you're not going to find them being interested to come back. So always make your sessions something where you're learning from them, but you're, together you're helping to improve it. Like together you're, you're coming up with ideas. It's interactive. It's helpful. It's thoughtful. It's thought-provoking. It's, it's, you know, that's the kind of environment you want to build. And so facilitating that takes some skill, takes some skills. But in time, you learn how to do that. And we're going to have some examples dur during this session. Problem solving, we talked about that with analysis skills. Being detail-oriented, it's very important because you're going to be writing requirements. Your requirements have to be perfect. Perfect in the sense that you can't really miss a requirement because when you miss a requirement, it's going to show up on the, on the other end. Like the client is going to see it, the customer is going to see it, and it's going to be pointing the finger back at you. You missed this part. So... You have to try as much as possible to be detailed, to, to know all of the edge cases, all the things that are going to be impacted, to understand what you're doing, so that when you write your requirements, you can have confidence. And you, it's going to be okay, because you're not going to do it in isolation. That's why you have a discussion. That's why you talk to developers. That's why you talk to the clients. That's why you talk to the customers. To uncover all of the things that you need to know about, so that when you, when you sit down to write your requirements, you are very confident, because you've had all of those conversations, right? Organizational skills, of course, you're gonna have to manage all these people. So you gotta get organized, <laughs> right? You're gonna have everything. For me, I put everything on my calendar. 
If it's not on my calendar, it's not happening. My lunch is on my calendar. My break is on my calendar. My focus time is on my calendar. My, all my meetings, of course, are on my calendar. But the calendar drives me in the sense that I know I need to get this thing done. Even my reminders. I know every two weeks I have to send out this document. I remind myself like a day before, hey, remember you have to send this out tomorrow. You have to do that. So my calendar has become my driving force. And it helps me to become organized. Because there's so much things going on. If you don't do something to help you, you're, you're going to forget things and it's not good. <music> Knowledge of the business structure. So this is going to help you just understanding what the business values are and what the business is trying to accomplish. Get in the big picture. So sometimes we get jobs, especially entry level jobs, we're kind of held in this little hole where they tell you what you need to know and you don't know anything else. When they give you that environment, try to broaden yourself. Don't wait for them to broaden you. They're not going to broaden you. They're not going to help you in that way. You, you're going to have to push to find out. So the project I'm working on, you know, where does it fit in the, the goal of the company, for example? Uh, you know, what, are, what are we trying to accomplish with our clients? What are the problems our clients are facing? How does this project fit in all of that? So you're going to have to be the one to widen your own knowledge, right? Because... Your manager probably not going to tell you because they're, they're focused on other things. You're new to the company. You might not know until after, after a while. So as, not to say you're going to go ask them a bunch of questions right day one, but try as much as you can to get the big picture because that's going to help you in whatever small scope that you're, you're responsible for to make it relevant and to make it tie back to what the, what the end goal is. Right? You definitely need to do cost-benefit analysis especially if you're doing the feasibility study part of it and the business case. Otherwise, not, not so much because we don't get into budget as business analysts too much. We just get into what to do. We don't worry about how much it costs. But if you're doing feasibility study, you're doing business cases, you might need to understand a little bit of the cost-benefit analysis. And sometimes it could just be where you go do a competitor gap, like you understand what the competitors are offering and you know what you're offering and you look at the price differences. So it doesn't have to be some elaborate finance term and you got to go learn finance to do this no you just need to do basic basic cost analysis right and the information should be readily available from either your finance department to tell you how much it's in cost or whatever online source that you can go you can go to to get it so don't be put off by this if you're not into accounting it shouldn't be a big thing process modeling process modeling understanding networks databases and technology so I put that as the last thing because technology, of course, is going to drive a lot of what you do because you're going to work with dev and you're going to write your stories. You're going to write your requirements in such a way that they can be easily converted into code. But I'm not 200% worried about it because one, you can go learn just basic programming if you need to. Um, it's not a must. But two, you're not going to be you know, working as a developer most of the time. The most you'll probably do, like, like Mary said, will be some SQL queries. And even that's not even um, required for all business analyst jobs. So you should know it. it's additional skill, like software skills, but these are things that you can learn. And I don't put it high in my totem pole of, of important skills.